If you want to make your website stand out, one way is to add animation, and it does not have to be complicated. In this video, we're going to use CSS to animate a website. We're going to look into transition, transform and its function like translate, rotate, or scale. And lastly, we're going to create our own animation using keyframes. And as usual, we're going to learn by solving different tasks. And by the end, we will animate the heading, the paragraph, the button, the hamburger button, and the sign navigation. So if you want to follow along, be sure to check out the description to download the resources. Otherwise, if you're ready, let's get started. If you download and open the resource, you will find in total three files, index.html, style.css, and an image file. In the index.html, you will find the content that we will be working with and a bit of JavaScript. At this point, if you haven't worked with JavaScript yet, it is totally fine. If we open the inspector and select the button and the navigation, when we click the hamburger button, the JavaScript is going to look for the button and the navigation. If they have a class equal to hamburger button open and navigation open, uh, it's going to remove it. Otherwise, it's going to add it. And that's basically what the JavaScript does. In the style of CSS, you could find the style for the website as well as the file task according to the file topics that we need to do. So you can pause the video to look into the project, but if you're ready, let's get started. For the task number one, we need to animate the backdrop using the opacity. So if we scroll down to the backdrop, by default, it's going to be display equal to none. And when the navigation open, uh, we select the backdrop and set display equal to be block. And you can see the backdrop over here. And instead of using the display for showing and displaying the backdrop, we're going to use the opacity. So by default, we want to set the opacity equal to zero. And uh, when it open, we want to set the opacity equal to one. So now if we toggle the navigation, you can see that it works the same way. And in order to animate this, we need to use the uh, transition property. And when it comes to transition, there are a few properties. First, the transition property. In here, we need to provide the property that we want to animate. So in this case, it's going to be opacity. And next, we need to provide the duration by using the property transition duration. And let's say one uh, second for now. And we also need to provide the transition timing function. This can be linear, easy in, e out, or we can provide a custom cubic function. But for now, let's stick with the simple thing and give it easy in out. And we can also provide the uh, transition uh, delay as well. So delay. And let's say 0 0.5 second. So now if we save that and toggle the navigation again, you can see that after 0 0.5 second, the opacity is going to change from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 in one second. And we don't need to write four lines of code for it. We can use the shorthand syntax as well by just saying transition. And first we provide the property, which is opacity, and then the duration, which is one second, and the timing function, easy now, and the delay. And let's delete this. And now if we save it, it's still going to uh, work the same way. But in order to make it better, I'm going to remove the delay and make this to be 0 0.4 uh, second. And now if we try it again, it looks quite good. And that's all the task number one. Let's move on to the task number two and get to know more about uh, transform property and translate function. In the task number two, we need to animate the site navigation using the transform property and the translate function. 
So now if we scroll down to the navigation, uh, by default, it has right property equal to minus 60 uh, view width, uh, which is the same with the width of the element. So it is not in the viewport, but it is right at the edge of the viewport right border. And when it is open, we set the right property to be zero. And you can see it uh, over here. And using what we have learned from the task number one, we can add transition to the navigation and we can animate the right property. So let's say transition right 0 0.4 second is in out. Now, if we save that, uh, you can see that now the uh, navigation slide in and slide out. But when it comes to animating in CSS, it is recommended to use transform uh, to ensure that we have a smooth transition. So in the navigation, instead of setting right equal to zero, we can use a transform property and we can use the translate x function to move the element on the x axis. So let's say minus 100 uh, here to move the element 100% of its width to the left. So now if we save that and toggle the navigation again, it's still going to work the same way. And to have the transition, we can turn right here to be transform. And now if we save that, we have the same animation. And we can also use the translate Y as well. But in order to make this work, we need to turn right here to be zero. So now if we save that, you can see that now the navigation is uh, moving up and down instead of moving uh, from the right to left. And we can also use the translate and provide the X value and the Y value. So let's say minus 100% and minus 100%. And now if we save that, we have a different animation. You can play more around with the translate function but for the task, I'm going to use the translate x and change the right value back to be minus 60 view width. And now if we save that, we have the animation. And that's it for the task number two. And let's move on to the task number three. In the task number three, we need to use the transform property and the rotate function to animate the hamburger button. So now if we go to the index.html and go to the hamburger button, you can see that inside the button, we have three different teeth for three different bar. You can see it over here. And we're going to change the hamburger button to be a closed button when the navigation is open. So let's go to the style.css and scroll down to the hamburger button. You can see here that I already select the three bar separately in the CSS when the hamburger button is open. So the first thing I want to do here is in the first bar, I want to rotate it. So let's use the transform here and the rotate function. Uh, let's say we want to rotate it 45 degree. So let's say 45 degree here. So now when the navigation open, the first bar is rotated 45 degree and you can see here that uh, the center of the rotation is in the middle of the bar but i want it to be at the end of the bar so in order to do that in the hamburger button bar i want to change the transform origin so let's use the transform origin property and i'm going to give it 21 pixel and because the width of the bar is 22 pixel, so now the center of the rotation is going to be at the end of the bar, as you can see over here. But in the first bar, I want to rotate it uh, minus 45 degree instead of 45 degree. And for the uh, third try, I want to rotate it 45 degree. And you can see here, we have a X button, but the second bar is still visible. So let's say opacity here equal to zero. 
and if we toggle the navigation again you can see now the hamburger button is changed to be an x button and let's animate it by adding the transition here and we want to add the transition to the transform value so let's say transform here and let's say 0 0.4 second is in out and we also want to add transition to the opacity so we can do so by adding a comma and say opacity and 0 0.4 second is in out and let's save that now we have a super nice uh, animation for the hamburger button and that's it for the task number three let's move on to the task number four in the task number four we need to use the scale function to animate the button when it is being hovered so when we hover this button we want to make it bigger and let's go down to the main button over here uh, you can see here that i already select the button when it is hovered so in here we can just say transform and then use the scale function you can see here that we have a few options uh, scale x uh, scale y so let's try to use the scale x function and see what it does and let's say 2 here for example so if we hover it you can see that now on the x-axis the button is going to be two times bigger and if we uh, change it to be scale y the um, height of the button when it's hovered is going to be two times bigger as well and for the task i want to use the scale function and pass in 1.5 as a value so now when we hover it the button is going to be 1.5 times uh, bigger and let's also add the transition to the button so let's say uh, transform 0 0.4 second and uh, is in out as well so now if we hover the button we have the animation and that's it for the task number four let's move on to the last task in the task number five we need to use keyframes to animate the heading and the paragraph so to solve this first we need to add a new animation or a list of keyframes so if we scroll down to the very bottom and let's add uh, a list of keyframes by saying add keyframe and we're going to provide the name of the animation i'm going to call it fit in now if you look back at the transition in the last four tasks you can see that it has two state the initial state and the end state and we achieve that by modifying the class using javascript or when the element is being hovered so in this animation i also want to do the same i want to have the initial state so we can use a form here and the end state and we can use a two here so at the beginning let's use transform here i want to move the element uh 200 pixel to the right so let's say translate 200 pixel here and i also want the opacity to be zero and in the end state let's copy this and change it to be zero and the opacity to be one and now that we define the animation in order to make this work we need to use it so let's go to the main heading and let's say here uh, animation and similarly to the transition we also have few property when it comes to animation first the animation name in our case is going to be fit in and the animation duration let's say 0 0.4 second and our animation timing function is going to be in easy now as well so now if we save that you can see now that whenever we refresh the page the heading is going to slide in and we can do the same thing to the paragraph but we're not going to write three lines of code instead let's just say animation here first we need to provide the animation name which is fading and then duration 
0 0.5 second and is in out and if we save that you can see that the heading and the paragraph are sliding in whenever we refresh the page but for the paragraph I only want to animate it after 0 0.5 second so let's say animation delay here 0 0.5 second so now if we save that you can see the animation run after 0 0.5 but we can see the paragraph before the animation so to fix it we need to copy the initial state of the animation and put it in the paragraph so now if we save that you can see it works but it disappears after the animation and to fix it we have another property in the animation which is animation fill mode and we can give it value equal to backward or forward which is the first keyframe or the last keyframe and in our case we want it to be the last keyframe so let's do forward here so now if we save that you can see now the animation work perfectly and we can also uh, write it in the shorthand syntax by saying uh, 0 0.5 second here and forward here as well and let's delete this and now it works the same and in the animation there is also another property that is used a lot which is animation iteration count we can give it a number for example 2 now if we save it and refresh the page you can see that the paragraph uh, is animated two times and we can even give it uh, a value equal to infinite so the animation is running infinitely it is useful when it comes to animating the loader but for this task we're not going to use it in the task number five the last thing i want to show you is adding more keyframes to the animation now we only have two keyframes uh, the first one and the last one but now i want to add the third one in the middle so to do so we can change it to be uh, zero percent and then the end would be hundred percent and we can add a new one which is fifty percent now if we say transform and let's say scale equal to 1.5 now if we save that you can see that we now have a new keyframe but let's change the duration of the animation to be one second instead of 0 0.4 second here now if we save that you can see the animation much better and that's it for the task number five you can play around and add whichever animation you want as long as it solves the task but let's summarize what we have learned first we learned about transition we can add transition to an element by providing the property the duration the timing function or sometimes the delay in the example we add the transition to the transform property in the navigation and we add transition to the opacity property in the backdrop and we also add the transition to both the transform and the opacity properties in the hamburger button bar and we also learned that there are a few default options for the timing function next we take a closer look at the transform property and its function like translate rotate and scale in the example we use the rotate function to rotate the hamburger button bar and we also change the center of rotation by using the transform origin property and we use the transit function to make the side navigation slide in and slide out and lastly we use the scale function to make the button bigger whenever we hover it and the last topic that we covered was keyframes and animation by using keyframes we can create custom animation and we can define different keyframes like form to or by using the percentage in the example we created the fading animation with three keyframes and we use it in the heading and in the paragraph and similarly with the transition we need to provide the animation name duration timing function and sometimes the delay all right so that's it for the video if you haven't yet subscribe to the channel and check out devchallenges.io for more tutorials 
Otherwise, happy coding and see you in the next video. Bye.